for this is just a little cartoon to, to illustrate this. We have the suck swallow emerging between 32 and 34 weeks um, with, with birth. <clears throat> that's integrated with respiration to give us a suckle pattern where the tongue and the jaw move together in an anterior posterior fashion. That's, this is normally guided by the suckle reflex, so the baby doesn't have to think about it. As the baby practices and the reflex is integrated, um, we get more of a dissociation between the tongue and the jaw, allowing the tongue to go up and down in a sucking pattern, which enables us to initiate spoon feeding. And typically, this occurs anywhere between four and six months. Um, with more stability through the jaw and more dissociation, we get um, munching, which is the small rhythmic up and down movements of the jaw, as well as, and just as importantly, the side to side movement of the tongue to enable us to push the food over to the uh, molar surfaces and recollect it. And this is uh, illustrated here by the little Cheerio, which once you push it over to the side, you can just uh, crunch it and it will dissolve. Um, with further development, you get more complex uh, grinding mo movement of the jaw and a rotary component of the tongue in order to um, break up meats and grind them into little bits, which is represented here by the, the utensils. Okay, now just as you're familiar with gross motor development and sequential progression for that, oral motor development follows exactly the same. So you have a sequential timed progression with each step building on the skills of the former. So we all know that a baby can't walk before <clears throat> they um, push up in prone or crawl. It's a sequential progression. So let's see how this fits together. Okay, so we have the infant head elongating into more of the adult head, okay? And at the same time, we have the, the motor pattern going from a simple um, suck swallow to the grinding and uh, rotary component for chewing. Now, in the normal situation, these are timed to occur so that as you get elongation and require a more mature transport pattern, that's what's happening. If you have a child who isn't able to um, advance their pattern, such as in a child oftentimes with cerebral palsy, as you get elongation of the head, but you have the mismatch of the oral motor pattern, you can see that it sets the child up for having uh, the potential for a feeding problem. <clears throat> 